All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores. And man, I'm trying to calm down, but I am extremely excited about this Bobby Wagner signing. Y'all do not understand. I'm pretty sure most of y'all do, but boy, there's no way y'all are not up in the air doing backflips, celebrating, going crazy right now after seeing this signing. And of course, as you see in the title, this is after the film. So I've taken some time to watch some Bobby Wagner from last season specifically, not necessarily in his prime. I want to know what he did last year at 33 years old. So we're going to dive into the fact that the Washington Commanders signed all pro linebacker Bobby Wagner. We got to talk about how the Washington Commanders are winning free agency. We're going to kind of take a, like an overall look at what we've been doing so far. But most importantly, we're here to do a deep dive into Bobby Wagner and how he's the perfect fit for what we have going on. Even though we already have Frankie Louvu in the linebacker core along with Jamin Davis, why Bobby Wagner is literally the best fit possible for what we're doing why i'm gonna bring up some stats from what he did last year 33 years old to break down why i feel like he's still gonna play at a very high level at 34 years old as well we're gonna take a look at a lot of his stats advanced stats pro football focus grades how great is he still even at 33 years old is he still a top 10 linebacker all of that so make sure you stay tuned we're about to go ahead and dive into all of that but before we do make sure you stiff arm that like button stiff arm the subscription button and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you stay tuned because again i'm keeping y'all updated on every single move that the commanders are making right now i'm keeping y'all updated whether we sign a kicker or a long snapper i've already done individual breakdowns and videos on those guys and i'm also keeping y'all updated on the bigger signings like the Bobby Wagners and I'm explaining to you why these are big signings of course we're going to talk about his money and everything as well how much he's getting paid and how much value we're potentially getting out of this guy but man I'm keeping y'all updated on every little thing the commander's doing again every signing gets an individual video I'm not packaging any guys together but I will do like an overall review of free agency once things start to calm down but every time I think that we're starting to have a dry day something else crazy happens and now we've just suddenly signed Bobby Wagner I still got to do a Jameis and Crowder and a Jeremy Reeves video as well but this takes priority so stay tuned because I will be coming out with the Jeremy Reeves individual breakdown along with Jamison Crowder individual breakdown as well because with those videos I'm gonna do a breakdown of like the safety group for Jeremy Reeves on top of the fact that he's an all pro special teamer and then Jamison Crowder I'm gonna do an overall look at who are all of our potential returner candidates especially with Antonio Gibson leaving to go to the Patriots so make sure you stay tuned keep me all updated on every little thing even if it's just a rumor even if it's not like a pure concrete sign Signing, even if it's like a report that the commanders are potentially interested in getting somebody i will keep you updated on those but i mean we're running this franchise right now like actual professionals so we rarely are getting any actual credible leaks about what we're doing all we know is it just happens we don't get any heads up we just see when it happens that it happens so stay tuned but let's go ahead and dive into this video i'm sorry for this extremely long intro as you can tell i'm just super excited let's go ahead and get to it man let's get it All right, so all of this chaos started when Ian Rappaport tweeted and reported, because again, Twitter is literally the go-to space to do your reports. I'm pretty sure they tweet these out before they even think about putting out an article he said sources seahawks perennial pro bowler and all pro linebacker bobby wagner is signing with the commanders on a one-year deal worth a max value of 8.5 million dollars a deal that includes six million dollars in guarantees so just to let you know he's probably going to be about like a six million dollar cap hit he was a, like a 5.5 million dollar cap hit with the seattle seahawks last year i'm not mad at giving him six million dollars at all man i'm super excited dan quinn was with wagner a decade ago in seattle now they're back a splash signing for washington i completely agree and let's just go ahead and let's back it up let's back it up let's talk about this whole dan quinn part of this because dan quinn does get his all pro linebacker back don't forget also on top of dan quinn being the seattle seahawks defensive coordinator when bobby wagner was over there in his full prime and they won that super bowl together going to super bowls and everything like that don't forget that ken norton jr from the seattle seahawks is now our linebackers coach and he was a former defensive coordinator for the seattle seahawks and while we're at it even on top of all of that we have three total 
former defensive coordinators in this defensive staff because don't forget we also have John Pagano as our senior defensive assistant as well he doesn't necessarily have any attachments to the Seattle Seahawks specifically but we have three former defensive coordinators here for the commanders Dan Quinn Ken Norton Jr. and John Pagano all on just the defensive side of the ball with different roles I'm super excited and then imagine what Joe Witt Jr. can do with a linebacker core like this we're going to talk about that later too because this there's a reason that they've been so deliberate with improving the off ball middle linebacker spot of their defense we're going to talk about how the green bay packers killed them in that playoffs game because they didn't have elite linebacker play in the middle of their defense and that's why they are so focused on improving that so far this offseason we're going to get to that though but before we get there Shouts out to Ben Stan did because I completely agree with this. Like Jacoby Brissett last year, Bobby Wagner has no agent. No outside clutter to wade through in the decision making. Moving cross country to a rebuild effort sounds like somebody who wanted to be back with the coaches that he knows. And also in parentheses, perhaps the money were best in show as well because maybe nobody else is willing to give them as much money as we gave them but i feel like if anything is more so the strong connections that we had and i told y'all i told we're going to talk about us being a free agency destination earlier and how i told y'all about that as well but also after we signed dan quinn the silver lining to it was that he could put together the best coaching staff and also possibly potentially attract some of the best nfl free agents because his word is bond his connections run long this guy has done it as a head coach in the NFL and as a defensive coordinator in multiple places to where his his arms reach everywhere he he's connected to somebody in some way shape or form no matter what basically and after we signed hired Dan Quinn as our head coach I told y'all even though I wasn't a huge fan of it that day and now I feel like it's an A plus signing based off of what we're doing right now and how much he's contributed to what we're putting together as far as the front office the coaching staff and the players especially um but even back then the silver lining was that Dan Quinn at the very least is going to bring potentially great coaches and great players with them and he's doing just that also shouts out to Grant Paulson because again with every signing he does like a quick little rundown of some of the most important information He's 33 years old, entering his 13th season. He's reunited with Dan Quinn like we just discussed. He had a career-high 183 tackles last year, y'all. Career-high, 33 years old, and had his best season statistically, at least from the tackle standpoint. Come on, dog. Nine Pro Bowls and six All-Pros. Come on, like, how can you not want that, bro? How do you not want somebody like that with just that stat line alone again we're about to do an even deeper dive as to why you love this signing and arguably it's the best signing we've made off free agency but i feel like jeremy chen and frankie louvo are probably up there for me and honestly so far the only bad signing was well, the only questionable signing was marcus mariota we've been hitting home runs back to back to back and then everything else has been great but also shouts out to scott abraham because i completely agree with this you want a leader in the locker room bobby wagner incredible get for the washington commanders franchise because not only a pro bowler not only an all pro but a winner he's bringing winning with them like i said all throughout the off season like these past few months even going back to late regular season when we were starting to look at who we could potentially get in free agency and the draft and things like that i said winning is a trait man i know it's a team sport but when you bring in guys that have proven winning in their track record and being strong contributors to that winning in their past experiences around the nfl that's a trait man that carries there's a certain leadership that comes with that and like i always joke about even if winning is like you could put it in the luck category we need some of that is we need everything we can get we need magic we need luck we need fortune we need voodoo if that's what it takes we need the commanders need whatever it takes to improve this team and if bobby wagner on top of all of the other things he's gonna bring that we're about to break down on how he's a perfect fit for this defense at the very least if he's bringing leadership and a little side of luck like how you get a main meal and a side of fries if he can bring some leadership some great linebacker play and just a side of luck with them i'll even take that and i'll count it towards my grade for why this signing is so great i don't care i joke about it but hey man if you're a winner there's something to that and even though i do like a lot of the draft linebackers you can't really find immediate leadership in your linebackers in a draft like you just can't expect a rookie to come in and immediately take over that leadership role especially with us potentially targeting linebacker 
in like the second through fourth round. It's not like we're about to go get like a top 15 linebacker pick. I don't think any linebacker in this draft is going within the top 20. There may be even a debate that maybe none of them go in the first round. So I just don't think within the guy that we're going to end up taking within a month and a half, that guy's going to be ready to step up as like the leader of the defense like we would need him to. And so getting bringing in a Frankie Louvu. I mean, if you're talking about leaders, a guy that worked himself up from a draft of free agent to elite linebacker, I mean, what more passion is that? Have y'all actually gone and looked up clips of Frankie Louvu like pre-huddle before the game starts? He's like literally the Ray Lewis, the Brian Dawkins of the team. That's the type of leadership and soul that he's bringing. The guy that we kind of hoped Chase Young would be, he's literally that. And then you're adding Bobby Wagner into the mix as well. This is going to be like a super zero tolerance. We expect greatness out of every single person on this roster in this coaching staff and in this front office because we're just bringing in guys like that and just to let you know we just got ourselves an alpha a super physical tone setter on top of frankie louva who's already that as well and shouts out to grant paulson for pointing out the fact that and it's also on a one-year deal that's really there's never really technically been a bad one-year deal out there unless you're giving pe people too much money and then we're only giving them six million dollars guaranteed against the cap so I'm telling you, man, this is like a super high ceiling, low risk type of signing right here, man. You can't miss. You can't miss. Because even if for some crazy reason he fell off of a cliff, which I highly doubt happens, because again, we're going to talk about that later. Well, I feel like he's still going to play at the very least at a Pro Bowl level this upcoming season for us. Even if he were to fall off of a cliff, that's only $6 million worth of cap hit. And we still have a ridiculous amount of cap space. I'm working on a video updating to y'all how much cap space we have remaining, even after signing the most free agents in the NFL. You'll be surprised. Last time I checked before this Bobby Wagner signing, though, we still had like the second most cap space. We're still at least top five again i'm gonna give y'all the update but i gotta wait for things to calm down so i can actually like confidently make that video and say hey the commanders have this much cap space next thing you know within an hour or less we end up signing somebody else now i look stupid in that video so just stay tuned once we just get at least a few hours of just calm i may go ahead and knock that video out i've been already updating it though i like have our cap space every time we made a sign and i've been like all right subtract that from that and things like that and then once we finally settle down a little bit then i'll finally go ahead and give y'all that update but again like i keep saying in my videos and like i said just earlier in my video that i came out with just like as we were basically signing bobby wagner so that video probably looks crazy even though i'm talking about all of our biggest needs remaining so if you just ignore the linebacker part even though i feel like i deserve some credit for that because i recorded that before the bobby wagner signing but if you just ignore the linebacker part of that video that video still is very important and is very relevant to what we have going on especially as far as who we need to get as far as for agency or the draft for left tackle right tackle cornerback receiver tight end all of that type of stuff so Gil stoke so still go check that video out sorry for that random tangent i just went on again i'm all over the place i'm excited but my main point is that in previous videos when i've talked about bobby wagner i've literally said the exact quote if you can promise me 2023 bobby wagner not even prom bobby wagner just give me 2023 Bobby Wagner, 33-year-old Bobby Wagner. In 2024, I'm super down to sign him. He was a top seven linebacker at 33 years old last year. And I'm not expecting him to have just this huge drop-off going into 34 years old. Me personally, I really don't. I mean, and honestly, to look at it, let's take a step back as well with how did linebacker go from one of our biggest weaknesses just three days ago to one of our biggest strengths on the entire team not just the defense but the entire team just two and a half days later like come on dog adam peters is cooking shouts out to mark tyler for pointing this out as well adam peters and dan quinn have done more at the linebacker position in two days than ron rivera did in four years and ron rivera was a former linebacker which takes me to my next point I feel like a lot of people haven't necessarily looked at it this way, but it is crazy that we had two ex-linebackers in the NFL, head coach Ron Rivera, defensive coordinator Jack DeRio, and they somehow completely ignored and neglected the linebacker position for years for some reason. But like I brought up before, again, I feel like a lot of people haven't paid attention to it and thought about it like this and looked at it from this angle. I think because they were linebackers, they felt like they knew the position so well that they kind of felt like they could just get anybody 
and turn them into good linebackers. I think it was more of like an ego overconfidence thing, if anything. But I love how Adam Peters is not ignoring the position group. He's not being overconfident. He's like, we need linebackers. I'm going to get you linebackers. And then from there, it's up to the coaching staff to get the most out of them. And another thing that I've brought up before in previous videos, if anybody understands how important a middle mic off ball run stuffing linebacker is it's dan quinn and joe witt jr especially after how the packers just did them filthy in the playoffs just a couple of months ago i mean the green bay packers killed the cowboys with big plays yes but i don't think a lot of y'all have actually really watched that game a lot of those big plays happened because the cowboys middle of their defense was so weak most importantly the middle linebacker group they they were forced to literally allocate more defensive resources to basically account for the middle of the defense to help it out which left them susceptible to big plays down the field because they had so many of their defensive players in the box so the cowboys defense even though it has been great overall the past few years they've had elite pass rushes they've had elite game changes in the defensive back group but they were weak in the middle of their defense and the green bay packers saw that they exposed that the cowboys trying to counter that by adding more to the box and then the green bay packers were like all right we hit your rock to your scissors then y'all go and get paper we're gonna come back with scissors that's basically what they just kept countering them oh, okay y'all y'all don't want to have a good middle of the defense we're gonna hit y'all in the middle of y'all defense to start the game as soon as y'all try to stack the box then we're gonna attack y'all deep down the field now what and the Cowboys really didn't have any answers because they didn't have enough middle linebackers to just handle their responsibility to control that middle of the defense on their own. They also didn't have good defensive tackles like we have. Like, you can definitely easily argue that they have better edge rushes than we have, but... I feel like if anything, Dan Quinn and Joe Wood Jr. can work around that with scheme. And we brought in Dorrance Armstrong Jr., Cleveland Farrell, Dante Fowler, and we already have my boy KJ Henry. And, and we may even draft a guy like Darius Robinson or Chop Robinson somewhere late or early second round. You never know. But either way, I feel like we can scheme around that. But one thing that Dan Quinn and D Joe Wood Jr. did not have last year was great middle linebacker play, which we just solved just now with Frankie Louvo and Bobby Wagner. You never know. We may not be done. We may still draft a guy higher in the draft than you expect, like my boy Peyton Wilson. But also, they didn't have elite defensive tackles. No Dan Quinn defense has ever had a pair of defensive tackles as good as Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne, and I'm sure he's super excited about that. Again, the Green Bay Packers abused the middle of their defense with Frankie Louvu, Bobby Wagner, Jonathan Allen, and Deron Payne. That's the last of Dan Quinn and Joe Witt Jr.'s worries now. Now we just got to figure out everything else around them. So I love the fact that they clearly saw from last year, why did we just lose the playoff game? What was our biggest weakness? All right, so we'll go to the Commanders. They already have the elite defensive tackle duo. We're going to add an elite middle linebacker, off-ball linebacker core, and now we're good to go. Now our biggest weakness is arguably our biggest strength, and the things that we're great at, we can just figure that out on the fly. We can figure out how to develop a great pass rush through scheme. We can figure out how to get these DBs the ball out through scheme, but you need talent straight up point blank period for that middle of the defense there's only but so much scheming you can do for a lack of talent and middle linebacker and defensive tackle you can manufacture pressure on the outside you can manufacture turnovers in the secondary but again you straight up just need the guys in the middle of the defense and i love the fact that dan quinn and joe with jr were like all right that's our biggest weakness all right that we're we're gonna any if anything overcompensate for that weakness and then when in doubt the things we're great at we'll just figure that out on our own but again just to go back to the point that they had takeaways completely figured out and getting pressure on the quarterback completely figured out with their own creativity they're arguably some of the most creative defensive minds in the nfl as far as scheming people up and putting them in positions to win even as talented as michael parsons is even he said it out of his own mouth that he felt like dan quinn maximized his talent by would depending on the matchup any given week if they had a weak left tackle he would be as an edge rusher more often but if they needed to stop the run a little bit more he would play a little bit more off linebacker off ball linebacker that day that game specifically dan quinn and joe jr make adjustments not only mid game but also going into games based on what the matchup is and trying to basically take advantage of the other team's biggest weaknesses and biggest holes especially on the offensive line and things like that so so I fully expect for them to be able to again scheme up and account for 
getting pressure on the quarterback and getting turnovers in the secondary but again my main point is you can't really scheme up just pure greatness at mike linebacker and great defensive tackle play i mean of course great coaching can help but it's only but so much you can do when you just straight up don't have the guys in those trenches right there and that front seven in the heart of the defense man so i'm great i'm super excited because now if they solve the middle of the defense, this could end up being one of the best defenses in the NFL. I can see it being an unstoppable defense at this point. And yeah, man, having a franchise quarterback is big time. It's still very important. Don't get me wrong. Quarterback is still the most important position, not only in all of football, but arguably in all of sports. Look at the playoffs last year. You need a great quarterback just to get a seat at the table. But then from there, you need an elite defense to win it all. I mean, look at the Chiefs. They won the championship, the AFC championship, only scoring 17 points. And then they won the Super Bowl after only scoring 22 points in regulation before they kicked that field goal in overtime. With the best quarterback of all time between two games, game scoring 39 points total in regulation that shows you that defense still really matters and the Chiefs arguably won the Super Bowl because their defense was elite last year and that was probably the best Chiefs defense that Pat Mahomes has had since he's joined the Chiefs and they I wouldn't I mean of course they didn't carry Pat Mahomes Pat Mahomes is still the best quarterback of all time but when you're winning important big games while only scoring 17 points in that game the defense seriously matters and i love the fact that dan quinn and all of these guys are making sure that defense does matter i'm absolutely in love with it man i love the moves that we're making i'm telling you man we are doing things the right way and moving on to bobby wagner let me preface this by saying this guy was 33 years old when I read you these stats and grades. Before we even get to the stats and grade, I just want to really get it through to y'all that this guy was 33 years old at the time of all these things I'm about to tell you right now. This guy had an 82.4 overall grade, a 91.5 run defense grade, and a 75.1 pass rush grade, and even his 60 coverage grade isn't that bad. But let me put it into perspective for you. When we're talking about that 82.4 overall grade, out of all linebackers in the NFL last year, that was seventh. Only players graded better than him were Tyrell Dodson from the Buffalo Bills, Fred Warner, Demario Davis, Jelani Tavai, Leo Chanel, and CJ Mosley. That's it. That's the whole list of linebackers graded higher overall than Bobby Wagner last year. Again, he's 33. I'm going to keep saying that. He's 33. He's 36. Come on, bro. This guy's different. And again, let's look at it from the other angle. With him being the seventh best linebacker, what does that mean he was better than? That means he was better than Blake Cashman, Quincy Williams, our Frankie Louvu. Also, I want to point out the fact that according to Pro Football Focus, the Commanders now have two top 10 linebackers in the NFL. When was the last time we've ever had that? Two top 10 linebackers on the same team in the Burgundy of Gold is scary hours. Come on now. And I'm telling y'all, I'm going to keep saying it over and over again in all of my videos. None of this would have been possible if Dan Snyder was still our owner. But again, back to my point, Bobby Wagner was better than all of those guys I just named. Also add TJ Edwards to the list Bobby Okarike, Ernest Jones Devin Lloyd my Georgia dog Roquan Smith Ivan Pace Jr. Jeremiah Wusakoromora Fasade Olakun I'm skipping names I'm just trying to give you some of the bigger names that he was better than last year at 33 Jordan Hicks Dre Greenlaw Patrick Queen who a lot of people wanted Eric Kendricks Levante David who just re-signed for a 10 million dollar deal even more than what Bobby Wagner just got I'm trying to put Isaiah Simmons Drew Tranquil our own Jamin Davis at rank 37 now we have three top 37 linebackers in the nfl remember there's only 32 teams so you can argue we have the best linebacker core on paper in the nfl at this point zach cunningham jerome baker Deion jones even our own cole holcomb and devondre campbell who just got cut by the packers again bobby wagner at 33 years old was graded higher and was arguably better than all of those guys and i want to repeat the alarming stat that i mentioned earlier as far as him being on the field, Bobby Wagner is coming off of his highest tackle season in his career last year. Age catching up to who? He was second in the NFL in stops in the run game with 48 last season. Who lost the step? And how about some more advanced stats for you since we're here? He had a 4.8% missed tackle rate last year. That is 
first place, the lowest out of anybody in the NFL last year. Who missed a step? He has 71 total stops. Again, he was number one in run stops, but he has 71 total stops, which was second in the NFL. And then he has 17 pressures and four sacks and only 81 pass rushing snaps. Who lost a step? Chris Cooley also shouts out to him for those stats to do this at 33 is absolutely insane. And I agree, Chris Cooley. He may have figured out how to beat Father Tom, actually, because also another thing shouts out to Grant Paulson for pointing this out. Bobby Wagner does not come off the field. He played 98 percent of snaps last season at 33 years old, y'all. 99 percent the year before that. This guy is ridiculous. So not only is he playing at an elite level but he's also very durable as well and again at 33 years old bobby wagner shouts out to my boy tan top podcast for this tweet right here because i completely agree bobby wagner might just be one of those aliens when it comes to age man it's a one-year deal but if he's got two or three good seasons left in him finish his career in dc please he can go retire a seahawk later on but please finish your next two three years if you can play like that that you just did at 33 years old moving forward for this season and hopefully the next two three seasons please don't let him go no matter what also let's not forget how perfect of a fit bobby wagner is that takes me to the next part of this video and again i've watched tape on all of these guys i've watched tape on jamin davis now i went back to do a little bit of that after dan quinn said we're going to use him in more like a micah parsons like role which we're about to get to i went back and watched some tape on frankie louvu after we signed him and then after we just announced signing bobby wagner i had to go watch some tape on him to see how all these guys could fit amongst each other and why they're going to bring out the best in each other as well each guy is gonna allow the other guy to do what they do best and not have to worry about the other things where they get spread thin that's why this bobby wagner fit is literally not good not great perfect i mean this is not the commanders just simply adding a great player to a position of need this is also great fit this is not just us okay we need linebacker let's go get one of the best linebackers regardless of fit no this is perfect fit i want to keep emphasizing that let's dive into it jamin davis is going to be the will linebacker and dan quinn already said out of his own mouth that they're going to use jamin davis in a micah parsons like role where he will rush the passer way more than he has previously done since he's hit the nfl a few years ago then we went and got Frankie Luvu, who is a great run stopper, really good in coverage, but arguably the best off-ball linebacker at getting to the quarterback. According to Pro Football Focus, he literally is the number one off-ball linebacker at getting to the quarterback with like a 91.8 pass rush grade as an off-ball linebacker. That's insane especially directly up the middle in either a gap that boy is scary he literally pancakes guards y'all so when he when there's a running back back there trying to block him to protect this quarterback it's literally a wrap you might as well go ahead and cancel that that quarterback's cooked so Luvu will basically be a healthy mix of all three facets at a linebacker position. He's going to move around everywhere. He's going to stop the run. He's going to be covering. He's going to be rushing the quarterback, which means that we still needed a true pure run stuffing Mike linebacker that can focus primarily on stopping the run first and foremost. Everything else is secondary. And who is that? Literally Bobby Wagner with the stats that I already gave you. He had his career high. Even through all, even when in his prom, he never had that many tackles in a season like he had last year. He led the NFL in run stops last year. Literally, if you're talking about run defense, it doesn't get better than him. According to Pro Football Focus, the only linebacker that was better at him, than him at run defense last year was David Long. And they felt like he was the 56th overall linebacker just because his coverage was so bad and his pass rush ability was like, all right. Whereas Bobby Wagner is also elite at run defending second only to david long but he's also not a liability in coverage and he can pass rush as well like the stats i just gave you earlier i also think it's notable that he wanted to join the commanders again i told y'all we were going to be a free agency destination months ago and that prediction from months ago is looking better by the day signing after signing that's aging like fine wine man and i told y'all a lot of people disagreed a lot of people were saying no you know the ptsd from dan snyder i understand but i I gave y'all the heads up that we were going to be a top free agency destination and i've literally made videos talking about it and breaking down why and now they've even exceeded my expectations 
So, I love the fact that, again, Frankie Louvu is going to be moving all over the place as like a chess piece, along with Jeremy Chin. Don't forget him, who's primarily going to be playing in the box, I'm assuming. So, he's going to also be a chess piece somewhere around there in the box, helping Bobby Wagner, Frankie Louvu, and Jamin Davis. And then Jamin Davis is going to be going after the quarterback, but also occasionally playing some coverage. And then he may have to do a little bit of run stopping, but not much, which is the thing that he was the worst at. And then Bobby Wagner can literally just focus on stopping the run. We're literally about to run that 4-3 under defense, which I'm really excited about. I may take some time to do a whole film session explaining to y'all what a 4-3 under defense is and why it could be potentially deadly with the guys that we have on staff in this roster. But I'm probably going to wait till after the draft to do that just in case we draft like a, another linebacker that's going to be a strong contributor. But bruh. Honestly, this doesn't even feel real. We went from David Mayo and Cody Barton to Frankie Louvu and Bobby Wagner, y'all. Do y'all not see how crazy that is? Like, has it actually hit y'all yet? Like, are y'all pinching yourselves? Our linebacker group may be one of the most improved position groups in all of football going from 2023 to 2024 out of every NFL team, out of every position. Because even beyond just those two, I'm expecting just coaching alone to have Jamin Davis finally looking really good as well, especially especially with his role change where they're going to focus on the things he does best and ask him to do the things he doesn't do well as least as, as less as possible so i'm really excited man I, you could definitely argue that the commander's linebacker group is the most improved position group out of the entire nfl also look at it like this Jamin Davis is going from being our best linebacker to our third best linebacker at best you never know maybe we draft a guy second third fourth round and he comes in and he's better than Jamin Davis already you never know but Jamin Davis is going from literally being our number one best linebacker easily to third best linebacker at best I mean both Frankie Louvo and Bobby Wagner are easily the best linebackers that we've had in Washington until at least going back to London Fletcher in 2012 I mean that I mean at the very least this was long overdue we as Commanders fans literally deserve this so now I ask the question, are we destined to win the NFC East division next year? Are we trying to pull a 2023 Houston Texans going from number two overall pick, hiring a lot of good coaches, bringing in some good front office staff members, making some really smart free agency signings to drafting a franchise quarterback with that second overall draft pick to winning the division and then also winning a playoff game within one year? It looks like if anybody's primed to do it, it's us. And I know at the very least, if I mean, forget everything else that I've said, all of this hype that I'm giving up on, you know, I'm Mr. Glass Half Full, I'm Mr. Optimism. I know for one thing, the thing that I'm willing to put the most money on is that we will not be giving up 30 points a game like we did last year. That's the one thing I will bet my leg on. We give up 30 points a game this upcoming season. I don't know what went wrong. Went wrong. I have no idea. And even the national media is seeing and saying that the commanders are winning the offseason right now. You have like Ian Rappaport and guys on NFL Network. Everybody's talking about us even before the Bobby Wagner signing. But then the Bobby Wagner signing just catapulted us to like the front of what people are talking about on ESPN and things like that. I love it. I'm never looking for any clarification, any like sort of comfort in like espn fox and those guys in the national media talking about us i'm not looking for any validation that's a better word for it but it's still nice to turn on first take and hear them talking about the commanders and how great it looks like we're gonna be it's still nice to hear we don't need it but i want it you know what i'm saying and because most importantly every outside signing that we've had so far has basically been outside free agents and we've been killing it. I mean, now, again, we've brought back Jeremy Reeves and Jamison Crowder as special teams guys. But that's about it. Everybody else has been from people that were signing from the outside. We're leading the NFL right now in the most free agency signings in, in free agency so far. Legal tampering period, all of that type of stuff. And then we've also, at the same time, avoided overpaying for any single person. Most of these guys are projected starters or strong contributors. All of these guys are on really good good value contracts to where these are the, a lot of these guys are going to be stills by next year by the time we look back and then really the only questionable signing that we have right now is Marcus Mariota and even that one I wouldn't necessarily give it a f but everything else is at minimal a b minus that's the only one where it's like I mean I guess I would give it like a c c minus c plus at best but we're killing the offseason right now I mean meanwhile the Cowboys I think the only thing they've done was re-sign a long snapper 
us signing an outside line sna long snapper is more impressive than that and that's easily the 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 least important well i wouldn't even say least important the least exciting signing that we've made so far because even though the marcus mariota signing is the most questionable at least you know it meets headlines right now the cowboys are not entering any headlines the only reason people are talking about them is because they're still this national brand but as far as free agency goes they have done nothing but lose players i mean we took a few of them from them shouts out to us shouts out to dan quinn to adam peters for that so now looking back I would probably say my favorite three signings are easily Frank Louvu, Jeremy Chin, and Bobby Wagner so far in free agency. They may even be able to top that if they go get like a Tyron Smith at left tackle. We'll see. I don't know though. I'm not even sure even if we sign Tyron Smith, depending on what the money is, if he can even step into this top three. And it's extremely hard for me to pick my number one free agency signing right now. I may need some time to calm down to decide on that one. But I can tell you easily right now, my top three signings are two former Panthers and a former Seahawk, which is crazy. I, who, who would have thought? Now, again, just get me a starting left tackle, and we are good to go. I mean, I'm feeling a little greedy right now, man. I'm getting up outside my body real quick. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm feeling greedy. Give me a good corner as well. Give me, like, a high floor, good, you already know what you're definitely going to get corner, like a Stephon Gilmore while you're at it, and we're done. We won free agency at that point. I don't care what anybody else does. And if we can do that, we may easily be the best team at the very least in the top 10 of the draft that's picking up there in that top 10. And so it may get to a point that all three quarterbacks would prefer to go to the commanders. I don't think either of them will even like pull like an Eli Manning to force themselves to end up getting picked by the commanders. Like say Caleb Williams, he tells the Bears, I'm not going to y'all. Y'all might as well not even draft me because I want to go to the commanders. But if we were ever to get close to a situation like that happening, it's with the free agency moves that we made. And again, I would make a strong argument that out of all of the teams picking in the top 10 of the draft, we have now turned into the best one at the second overall pick also shouts out to dc sports experience for this one he tweeted out the commanders have turned over almost 25 percent of their roster with their signings so far and still have a ton of money we can still go get a, a tyron smith if you really want to man oh my lord we just went and got a general in the linebacker group two of them and frankie louva and bobby wagner i'm super excited and to continue with that point shouts out to warren sharp for pointing this out Washington halfway to signing a new starting roster. I mean, literally almost an entirely new starting roster compared to what we had last year. It's going to be like over like 70, 80 percent turnover. You got Austin Eckler running back, Tyler Biedish, who's going to be our starting center. Nick Allegretti, who's going to fight for that starting left guard spot. And I think he's honestly going to win it once he's healthy enough. Then you have Edge Dorrance Armstrong, Dante Fowler and Cleveland Farrell, who will be a part of that rotation of starting for us. Um, more so Dorrance Armstrong and Cleveland Farrell who will be like our starting edge rushers but Dante Fowler and I'm pretty sure KJ Henry is going to be involved as well and then if we end up signing a guy I'm mean, drafting a guy that guy will be part of that as well then of course linebacker Frankie Louvu those are your two starters there safety Jeremy Chin is going to be a starter and then you also I know people don't really care about special teams that much and it's not that exciting but Tyler Ott is a long snapper and Brandon McManus as a kicker is as pretty much as automatic as and as safe as it gets Brandon McManus did miss a single kick last season within like 40 something yards and long snapper Tyler Ott is a pro bowler from 2020 I know it's special teams but we're still killing the offseason right now and shouts out to Tay and Todd podcast because I completely agree Dan Quinn called this a recalibration you can call it whatever you want but this we this is the most rebuildy of a rebuild that we've ever seen especially for the Washington Commanders I completely agree and I love it and also, man, how about we just take some time to thank Adam Peters, man? He is a different type of guy. He's in his bag. He's in God mode. He is going stupid. He's not afraid to spend the money on but he's being smart with the money on So I love it. And somehow, even with the high expectations that I have for him after we hired him, he somehow even exceeded those expectations. So I'm super excited, man. That's the end of this video, man. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please still follow me that like button, still follow the subscription button, still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you stay tuned because, again, I'm keeping y'all updated on every little tiny thing the commanders do. I'm so excited. I know I'm probably going to be one of the later people getting this video out 
out there but y'all know me man i'm gonna do good work like i gotta watch some tape before i just start talking about a guy we signed i know everybody feels like bobby wagner was a great signing but i had to go look for myself and actually watch a little bit of tape specifically from him the 2023 season while he was 33 years old there's no point of looking at tape when he was in his prime at like 27 so i went back and looked at that that's why this video took so long so i really appreciate y'all being patient with me and still checking out this video just stay tuned i'm, I'm working on videos for the jamison crowder resigning and the jeremy Rees resigning all of that type of stuff and again like i said in the intro we're not just talking about those guys specifically we're talking about the outlook and the position groups that they cover as well is jamison crowder a depth wide receiver as well as long as who's competing with him but for the starting punt returner spot for this team and the same thing with jeremy reeves he's our all pro special teams are but he's also technically a safety so we're going to take a look at the overall safety group and and also other guys that may be strong contributors on special teams this upcoming season so stay tuned for those videos keep y'all updated with everything i really appreciate y'all again shouts out to everybody that's donating to the cash app in between these videos again since i'm not live streaming yet I'm going to make sure I shout y'all out in the very next video that I do after y'all donate to the cash app or whatever. So I really appreciate y'all. And again, speaking of live streams, I am working on some. I'm definitely going to do some free agency live streams. Again, once things just calm down, I got to be on high alert and be ready to record a video as soon as we sign somebody. But once we have a period of calm, I will do not only a live stream, but like a live stream call in show where y'all can call in and you voice your opinions on how you feel this free agency period is going and all of that type of stuff. Whatever thoughts you may have about the draft and things like that. So stay tuned for all of that. I'm going to catch y'all later. I appreciate y'all. I'm out.